On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at an image of life. They say that life, you know, we, we want to progress, we want to grow in holiness and, you know, and deepen our spiritual life. And they say our growth, it's kind of like a spiral. You know, we don't just shoot straight up. I mean, we might have special times where we're just, you know, uh, it seems like we're just shooting up like a rocket to holiness. I really enjoyed this morning uh, spending time meditating on this gospel passage from, from the gospel of Mark, the first chapter, the cleansing of a leper. And one of the nice things about being a priest is it's kind of my job, you know, to, to contemplate the scriptures, to study the scriptures. And, and I, you know, I like to do that early in the morning, uh, kind of like the Hebrew people gathering the manna early in the morning. And uh, one of the things I, that kind of struck me is this, this leper. He goes to Jesus and he says, if you wish, you can make me clean. And it's almost like, in a way, he's kind of giving the Lord Jesus permission. You know, saying, hey, I, I give you permission if you wish. He doesn't demand, he doesn't insist, he just says, you know, if you wish, you can make me clean. And, you know, I, I, I thought to myself, I think there are things in our life areas of weakness, areas of sin, that the Lord is just waiting for us to go to Him and to say, Lord, if you wish, you can have this. You can make me clean. And I think some of these areas too, we just, you know, we just need to be in that place where we're ready to finally let go. You know, like maybe someone likes to, to gamble a lot, likes to go to the dog races, you know, every day, going to the dogs. Do they use that expression down here? I'm, go, I'm going to the dogs, you know. Do they, they have dog racing in here? It Does, doesn't matter. The point is, is that <laughs> may, maybe, you know, maybe someone enjoys, you know, gambling. And they know it's, you know, they're wasting their money and maybe wasting their time and all of that. I'm not saying going to the dog races, the odd times, a bad thing. But anyways, um, and they know it's wrong and they know they should stop. But they're not ready to say to the Lord, Lord, if you wish you can take this away from me. You know, or maybe a person likes to use bad language a lot. They, get, they like it, and they know it's bad, and they know they should stop, but they're just, they're not ready to let go. And so we might want to look at our lives and ask, you know, like, are, are there areas in my life where I'm holding back? And then it's interesting, uh, when the Lord heals him, the Lord sternly tells him, you know, keep this quiet, and it says, uh, the man went and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. And they say part of the reason, we see this a number of times in Scripture, Jesus would tell people, hey, shh, don't tell anybody, was very practical. If they went and told everyone, Jesus would be dealing with a huge crowd that would have been, you know, would be unmanageable, and Jesus wanted to go from town to town. And, and, and anyways, uh, but in the scriptures, when there, there's a number of stories where Jesus tells people, keep this quiet, and they go right away and tell everybody. And what seems to be implied, what, what the gospel writers seem to be implying, is there's no malice in this. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're showing just how powerful the joy is, the, the excitement at having been touched by Jesus. And we, we see this uh, you know, in, in our own churches. When someone has a major conversion, they can sometimes get a little foolish. They want to tell everybody and, you know, they do things that later they kind of look back and say, well, that was really foolish, you know, and, and, uh, and, and all of that. And again, it's, it's just a sign of how powerful it is when we're touched by Jesus. And the truth is, brothers and sisters, it's Thursday night, it's kind of cool outside, and you're here in church. Why? Because you've been touched by Jesus. That's why you're here. That's a beautiful thing, to be touched by Jesus. And we, we do hear Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. He touched the leper. We know in Jesus' time, you never touch a leper. Why? Because leper, well, first of all, you can, they were worried you would contract the leprosy. But most, more importantly, you would be considered unclean. And isn't it, isn't it interesting that God made man, the holy God, he touches the uncleanness, and heals, and, and heals the leper. A beautiful thing. And so praise God that we've been touched by the Lord and that we're here tonight in His presence. Um, 
Now, it's, it's interesting. When we read Bible stories in, from the Gospels of people who've been touched by Jesus and experienced a healing or a deliverance or something, we almost never get the whole life story of the person. Like this leper, he was healed by Jesus. He went and told everybody. But we don't know how this person's life went after that, you know. And, and, and the truth is, is that this person, like every one of us, would have continued to have to struggle through life. Even though he was touched by Jesus, I'm sure he was radically transformed. There was a fire in his heart, a, a, a powerful conversion. We hope and pray he persevered to the end. We don't know that for sure. You know, we, know, we know some people don't persevere to the end. Um, but we do know that this person who was touched and healed by the Lord never was dismissed from the battle of life. Life in life, we're in a battlefield. And so again, this, this leper, he would, have, he would have, you know, I'm sure he would have struggled again with sickness, maybe, you know, getting colds, trials, temptations, you know, discouragement. He would have gone through all of that. And it's so important for us who have been touched by the Lord to remember, and we heard this in the first reading, the importance of persevering to the end. When I was going through my conversion, I loved reading the lives of the saints, these saints who lived heroic lives. And one of the things I loved most about their lives was their perseverance. You know, it's one thing to have a major conversion, but it's another thing to persevere through the trials, the difficulties, the sicknesses, the discouragements, the misunderstanding, the low points, the, the, the dark nights, the deserts, for someone to persevere through that day after day, year after year, that's a beautiful thing. And for someone to, to die having persevered to the end, that's a glorious thing. And that's something we should all long for, but it's also something we should also prepare for, you know, that, that, hey, I've been touched by the Lord, but it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, it's going to be a cakewalk. Now, I, 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 I read about an image for life, and I read this, I thought, this is, this is the perfect image. I love getting images to help kind of understand uh, things. But the, the, they say that life, you know, we, we want to progress, we want to grow in holiness and you know, and deep in our spiritual life. And they say our growth, it's kind of like a spiral. You know, we don't just shoot straight up. I mean, we might have special times where we're just, you know, uh, we, it seems like we're just shooting up like a rocket to holiness. But generally, we kind of, you know, we kind of spiral up. But not only is it kind of like a spiral, it's kind of like a spiral on an angle. And the image they use is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You're all familiar with the Leaning Tower of Pisa? I saw the Leaning Power of, Tower of Pisa from outside. I wanted to go up it, but it was $20 just to go up this, uh, a staircase. I said, forget that, you know. Plus, there was a big lineup, and we were in a hurry. But um, I don't know if this is how, exactly how it works. But if, if you can imagine going up a spiral staircase, but the staircase is slanted over so that when you're going up, you're going up, 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 and then you go down for a bit because it's on an angle, and then you go up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down. down. You get that? So you're going up, but because it's on an angle, every so often you're kind of actually going down and then up again. And the reason I love that image is, again, I think all of us, I don't know if there's any exceptions to this, but all of us, as we persevere, as we strive to grow, we have trials, we have temptations, we mess up, and sometimes we can think, well, oh, I'm going downhill, this is, this is awful, but maybe not. Maybe you're just kind of spiraling upwards on an angle, and if you just persevere, you'll keep getting higher and higher and higher. And again, my understanding and my experience, not only in my own life, but in the people, you know, I minister to, is again, we all have that ebb and flow in our life. You know, we, we kind of do good, we do good, we do good, and then it, then it gets difficult and we might mess up. And then we do good, we do good, we do good, and it gets difficult. And maybe some of you experience this in your marriages, you know, in your family life. 
Is there any family where it's just perfect all the time? You know, I spent a week with my brothers, two of them. One of them is a priest, another one is a, you know, a good, faithful Catholic. And we're all, you know, we all love the Lord a lot, but we still have tensions the odd time. You know, sometimes it feels like it's that spiral staircase where, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're growing in deeper and deeper in friendship, but there always seem to be those little, you know, uh, challenges or difficulties, and that's okay. Again, I think what's important is to keep climbing that staircase. You know, keep going. Persevere to the end. We've been touched by the Lord. He loves us more than we could ever imagine. And He wants us to spend eternity with Him in heaven. But we don't want to be like the Hebrew people we, we heard in, in the, you know, the, the first reading. They, they, they kind of gave up going through the desert. They kind of got fed up and said, forget about it. You know? And maybe if someone would have told them about the, the, spot, the, the Tower of Pisa, they might have persevered. They might have said, hey, we're just, we're just on a bit of a downward, you know, we're, we'll be going up again soon. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. So let's pray for that grace tonight. And tonight I want to particularly give you the opportunity. Um, if there's something you want to surrender to the Lord tonight, like this leper did. The leper said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Is there something in your life that perhaps tonight you want to say to the Lord, Lord, I give this to you. I know I've been hanging on to this. I, it, it might be anger. It might be unforgiveness. It might be a bad habit, a kind of maybe a way of thinking. And, and maybe tonight you're saying, you know what? I want to give it to the Lord. And it's interesting the Lord's response. The leper says, if you wish. Well, guess what? God doesn't wish anything. Jesus' response is, I do will it. Jesus doesn't wish for things. He wills things. And what Jesus wills comes to be. Jesus doesn't wish you get better. He wills you get better. So what I'd like to do is we're just going to take a moment. And if there's anyone here who has something that they want to give to the Lord tonight, maybe I'll just invite you to come forward and maybe just kneel on, on the, the steps of the sanctuary here. Again, the red, the blood of the Lamb. And, and I'm, I'm not going to really do anything. I'll, we'll just say to the Lord, Lord, I give you um, all my life and heart and my struggles. And we'll just take a moment and let the Lord work His grace. Let the Lord touch you in His mysterious way. And then you can return to your seats. So again, if there's anyone here tonight who has something that tonight you're ready to give to the Lord, to say, Lord, if you wish, if you will it, you can make me clean. Why don't you come forward now, kneel on the steps, and we'll just, we'll just pray a little prayer to the Lord. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark going on, An Image of Life, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1830. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at taking our first step. Who is faithful in little things, the Lord will give the grace to be faithful in bigger things. And so again, we might have that drip, 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 that call in our life. And when we're finally ready to, to, to respond to it, when we, when we get it, our first step might not be that impressive.
I just wanted to take up, take this opportunity to, to clarify a misunderstanding. Most people would say that God can do anything. Well, I have to tell you today that that's not true. There's one thing God can't do. And that is, he cannot resist a humble heart. He can't not forgive a humble heart that turns to him and asks for forgiveness. And in that, we see the vulnerability of God. Because of that one thing God can't do, God is vulnerable. But God leads by example. In a certain sense, God leads from a position of vulnerability. God leads from a position of weakness. And so we follow God's example when we forgive. That we express the very vulnerability of God when we forgive. And so God is calling us to lead from a position of weakness. We see this in the life of Jesus. Have you ever said to yourself, what was the father thinking when he sent the son and he asked the son to come to earth with no temporal resources, no economic power, no uh, family stature, no political status. And he said, son, now go tell the world that you're my son. So that's what I call leading from a position of weakness because we know the reception that Jesus received. W would we expect any other reception? And yet nevertheless, Jesus came and he put his own um, status aside as Philippians 2 tells us. He laid his glory by. He led from a position of weakness. He placed himself in a position of vulnerability. And now he's asking us to do the same. Do you have situations in your life? Are there people that God's calling you to love? And odds are pretty good you're not going to get a lot back. As a matter of fact, your outreaches might be spurned. Are there people in your life where, yeah, it's, there's just no ROI, no return on investment in that relationship, and yet something inside of you, something inside your heart knows that, no, Jesus wants me to love this person. Jesus wants me to reach out. And you look at yourself and you look at the resentments you have, and you know it's not right to resent them, and you just feel so weak, you just feel that you cannot rise to the task. The fact that you have those resentments and the fact that you are equally called to love means that you are leading from a position of weakness. You do not have what you need to get the job done. So here's the other beautiful reality. Because of your relationship with Jesus, because you are a son, or because you are a daughter, because you are a full-fledged member of the kingdom, you are a prince or a princess, that you have all of the kingdom of God behind you. That despite your brokenness, your weakness, your resentment, your judgments, behind you, you have the backing of the kingdom of God. Not only that, Jesus says the kingdom of God is in you. And so, you are part of this royal family, the family of the kingdom of God. You are, you are royalty. And yet, you have this pronounced weakness. Now, do we have, do we have an analogy in our daily lives where we see people that we admire because they're royalty? Some of those folks have character issues and some don't. But isn't there something about royalty that nevertheless, character issues or not, we are charmed by them? How much more our father is charmed with us. He looks at us and says, son, my daughter, 
and he sees our weakness and he goes, I don't care. I am with you. That everything in my kingdom is yours. Remember the story of the prodigal son? Remember what the father says to the son who was faithful to him? And that the, the, the son who was faithful to him was jealous that the father was going to have a party for the son that returned. And the father, with great love, says to the son, Son, everything I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. And so when we look at what we're called to and we look at what we have to offer, if we are honest with ourselves, we don't have what we need. But because we're royalty, we've got the resources of the king behind us. And because we're royalty, we can look at our weakness without condemnation. I'm a prince. I'm a prince of a guy. You're a princess. God is charmed by you. There is no condemnation. We look at our weakness and we're condemnation free. We might feel convicted that we need to work on certain things. Fine. Our father will say, okay, son, we're going we're gonna to focus on this area in your life now. We're going to move you forward. Not that this is going to change my affection towards you. I'm charmed by you, my prince and my princess. But if you acknowledge your weakness, we can then work together. We can move forward. But if you, if you remain proud, you're not giving me anything to work with. And I so want to move you forward. Not because it has anything to do with my love for you. You know what it actually has to do with? It has to do with your freedom. You know that I made you free, right? God made us free. That's another thing, by the way, that, um, that God can't do. He's, he's, he can't force us to do things, right? He's given us our freedom. So the reason why he wants to move us from our faults is so that we can be free. I'll give you an example. How free would you be if someone could say something to you and it never bothered you? Imagine if you could be a resentment-free person. You could declare your own personal environment as resentment-free. How free would you be? And the father says, sweetheart, son, I want to bring you to this place where people can say something to you that's maybe critical. And, and you're like, oh, I'm okay because God loves me. I'm a prince. God's going to take care of everything. That's where the Lord wants to take us. We, we're at this place where we... We just naturally live this divine sonship, this divine daughtership, feel totally loved by the Father. We look at our weakness and go, no problem, Daddy's going to help me. Daddy's moving me forward. And it's all good. Father, we just, we thank you. You know, frankly, Father, we have no idea the inheritance we have in you. But we so want to understand what it means to be your prince to be your princess, to understand what it means to have the kingdom of God in us so that we can freely, without condemnation, be honest about our weakness so that you as our Abba, as our Papa, and as our Daddy can move us forward to a new and wonderful place of freedom, again, without fear, without condemnation. So, Father, we ask you to stir up this grace that we know is in us but burst it forth, Lord, so that we can love you with our whole hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We appreciate so greatly the support that you give to Food for Life through your prayers and through your financial gifts. From time to time, I like to read a couple of comments or letters to you or put them in our newsletter so you know that what you're doing in terms of your support, your prayers and your financial gifts, it really makes a difference in the lives of individuals. You know, Food for Life is not just about Father Mark here and, and Father Terry and Chris and myself and our producer Michael who's behind the camera, but you are equally a part of this ministry and together we all make it happen. And God, through us, works through us to bring this ministry and the good news to the people who watch. So I just want to make you aware that you're a real important and critical part of the team and to thank you for being a part of the Food for Life family. A couple of letters I want to read to you today that I hope will encourage you to know that 
where you're giving, where you're contributing, it really makes a difference, comes from one viewer who writes, I'm writing to thank you for helping me to invite Jesus into my heart. I'm a cradle Catholic, and I've always had a strong faith since childhood, but I've struggled with illness. The Lord's always been with me, but I came to know Him in a more personal way, and I've felt His love and His compassion and His mercy. He helped me to see good doctors, and people prayed for me. God is continuing to heal me and help me grow as a Catholic, and I pray that through Food for Life and our prayers and sacrifices that many will invite the Lord into their hearts. A second viewer writes this, how Food for Life helped her and her husband. My husband died a while back, and I wanted to say to everyone at Food for Life how much your program meant to him and to me. He was a quick-tempered man, but overcame his temper through the teachings and help of Food for Life. He became more mellow. One of your programs dealt with how to treat people, and that affected him. Your programs also helped me in my faith journey. I'm a convert to the faith and have come so much closer to Jesus by listening to Food for Life. I asked Jesus to come into my life, and I'm so happy now, and I truly believe that Jesus is with me. Thank you again for this Catholic program. It is what the world needs. And we're thankful to these two viewers who took the time to write. We were so blessed as we read these letters. And again, we're blessed by you who stand with us. If Food for Life has been a blessing to you and you've never supported the ministry, I'd invite you to prayerfully consider a regular monthly gift or a one-time gift, whatever God would put on your heart, because it's only through the collective efforts of all of us that Food for Life stays on the air. And we do need to hear from you, so please write to us at Food for Life. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1830 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on An Image of Life. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life. Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We ask you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post-dated checks or through our website to help us continue the Food for Life ministry. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2G8. Thanks to your faithful prayers and tax-deductible financial support, Food for Life is the longest-running Catholic television program in Canada. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Taking Our First Step. Who is faithful in little things, the Lord will give the grace to be faithful in bigger things. And so, again, we might have that drip, 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 that call in our life. And when we're finally ready to, to, to respond to it, when we, when we get it, our first step might not be that impressive. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.